Hi, this is David McCann for Elementor 360. In this video, I'm taking a look at the Dynamic Loop Builder that comes with the Pro version of Unlimited Elements. One of the limitations of Elementor Pro's post widgets is that you can't customize the individual items in the list or grid. You're not able to, for instance, add custom fields. Unlimited Elements overcomes this with their Dynamic Loop Builder and allows you to create custom design templates for use with grid, carousel, tab, accordion, or slider widgets that come with Unlimited Elements Pro. This video is a walkthrough where I'll show you how to add custom fields to the template grid using Dynamic Loop Builder. Unlimited Elements comes in a free version available in the WordPress plugin directory and a premium version available on their website. This is the free version here. It has more than 100,000 active installs, 179 five-star reviews, and 10 out of 10 support questions have been answered. So the team is on the ball answering user questions. This is the website for Unlimited Elements, and you can see that it has some features such as charts, a very large widget library. There are more than 100 widgets available in the free version and more than 200 in the pro version. And it has a widget creator built into the plugin and I think this is probably one reason why you have so many widgets in the plugin is because you have lots of users who are building their own widgets and sharing them. And you have the team that's demonstrating the widget creator by creating some unique and interesting widgets that they share with customers. It has a number of templates and we'll look at those in a few minutes. The Loop Builder, which is a subject of the video. There's some animated section backgrounds. You have some options for advanced post selection. If you're using WooCommerce, advanced product selection. Remote control widgets, it's where you have controls on the page that when you click them or tap them, interact with some other element on the page. Sync widgets is similar, except that more than one control is synced together. Some other things I wanted to show you on the website is that they have a pretty good documentation section. They have some videos in their YouTube channel. And they have a Facebook group. If we look at the pricing, there's annual subscription for one, five, or unlimited sites. There are also lifetime packages also for one, five, or unlimited sites. Note that Unlimited Elements uses Freemius for licensing and updates. I have here a test install of WordPress. I've got the free cadence theme, and I've got some test posts, some demo content, and a custom post type called books. Let's take a quick look at the plugins installed. You can see I have Elementor and Elementor Pro installed. And you're going to need Elementor Pro for this because we're going to be creating some advanced templates that Elementor Pro makes possible. And you'll note that we have Unlimited Elements, the premium version. Now, one nice thing about Unlimited Elements is you don't have to have the free version installed and activated also. It's a single plugin, so that's nice. And that means those numbers that we saw in the WordPress plugin directory, there are many more users than that 100,000. Okay, I've used custom post type UI to create the book custom post type and a taxonomy called genre and some tag like taxonomy called characteristics. I've added some custom fields with advanced custom fields to the book records. Let's take a quick look at those. Here are some book records. You see the genres here, and some of them are marked as favorites. And then if we take a look at one of the book records, we'll see here's the genre, the characteristics, featured image. Here are the custom fields, a link to the author's website and the author's photo. 
Okay, so that's what we're going to be working with. If we jump over to the unlimited elements, you see it adds an admin menu area here. And let's take a look at the widgets. There's this option here to show only installed. And if you check that, you see that there are a small number of widgets installed. And these are ones, this first one is one that I created for a previous video on the widget builder. And that's a cool feature. Not only can you create your own from scratch, but you can modify any of the ones that come with unlimited elements. For example, we just jumped into the widget builder here, and you can see that there are some general settings, some field settings, where you add your HTML, and it uses the Twig templating language here, which is a tool from the Symphony project, and it's very powerful. It allows you to use your custom fields and your regular fields. You see them over here on the side. You can add custom CSS, custom JavaScript. You can include JS and CSS files and assets such as images when you create your custom widget. So I think the widget builder is one of the cool features of unlimited elements, and I did do a video on this. I've seen a couple of other Elementor add-ons that have a widget builder, but so far of all that I've seen, the unlimited elements one is most robust and complete. Now, if we uncheck this show only installed, you see that there are many widgets in these different categories. And the ones that are marked as web, these you download to your site, and then they'll show up in the Elementor Builder. And this way, of those hundreds of possible widgets that you can use, you don't have them all installed. You just pick the ones you want, so you're not causing lag and slowing things down. Okay, and then these background widgets, these are section backgrounds. Then there are templates. Okay, you can see there's some template sets. These sets include several pre-designed pages. Okay, so the kits similar to what you might see with Elementor Pro or some other add-ons that supply kind of a starter type set to get you going with your website. And then there are some settings here. And some of these are optimization options, give you some choice in where you want to load your files. And if you want to show previews and things like that, what permission to use the editor, Instagram integrations, and some troubleshooting information. Okay, and then this is if you want to become an affiliate or uh, access your account. So that's kind of the admin menu there. All right, let's look at our widgets here and make sure that we have the ones we need. Okay, we've got the dynamic loops. That's what we're going to use here for our template. Now, I also need pagination, so let's see. Okay, that one's installed also. Okay, so I think we're ready to go. Now, what we're going to be doing is here on the front, this is the best we can do with the cadence theme for the book archive. See, the image is large. We don't have any uh, custom fields. So let's see if we can fix that. And the way the dynamic loop builder works is you start off, first you build a template, which will be one record. So one card or row or item in the list. And then you add that to your grid. Okay, so let's go and do that now. So I'm going to go to the theme builder. And we're going to start by creating a single post. Don't want to use any of the pre-designed ones. And let's set a preview here to make our life easier. Let's want it to be a book and use this one. Okay, so I'm going to start off adding a section. I don't need margin at the top or bottom because that'll be taken care of in the grid. So first, let's add a featured image. All right, and I think probably medium is big enough. And we'll center that. Okay, and let's make the link go. We'll use the dynamic data option to the post URL. Okay, and then under that, we're going to add the post title. We'll center that and we'll make it an H2. Let's make the size a little 
smaller. Okay, then under that we'll add our post meta. Don't need comments. Let's see, we want to center that. Okay, and then let's add, remember we have that favorites option. So let's do terms, characteristics, and let's change the icon to be a heart. All right, that looks nice. I think we can get rid of the time also. All right, let's add the excerpt. It doesn't matter that this stretches out because it's in the grid, it's gonna compress down naturally. And we'll limit the excerpt length, let's say 22 words. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now under this, we're gonna add two columns. Okay, and this one, we're going to have our read more button. Okay, and it will go to the post URL. And then, the other side will add another button and this one will be author's website and this link will be our custom field author's website all right so we've gotten our custom field in here let's go to the column level and style let's give it a background color i like blue Make this a very, very light blue. Okay, and then a border. We'll give it a blue color. And maybe a border radius. Okay, what else do we need to do here? Is that good? All right, let's publish that. We don't need to give it a condition. Now let's go to the dashboard. Let's give this a name, let's say single book item. All right, now let's use this in our archive. So let's go back to the theme builder and let's create the book archive. All right, add a section. This time I will give it some margin at the top and bottom. Okay, and we'll add our heading. Okay, and then we'll add some text under that. Okay, and now we'll add another section. And here now we will go and add the dynamic template grid so that we can use the single book item template we created. Okay, that's looking pretty nice. We'll have it shift to books though, whoops. Okay, and then maybe six items to the page. So that's looking pretty nice. Let's see, we wanna add the pagination widget. Okay. Here we go. All right, let's publish it. And now we want to add a condition. This is going to be book archive. And it's going to be genre archive. And it's going to be this characteristics tag archive. Save and close. Now let's go back to our dashboard. Call this book archive. Update. Okay, if this worked well, we should have a new archive. And there it is. Okay, you can see we have our favorites showing here. Here's our custom field. See if that works. Yep, that's working. All right, and here's our pagination. All right, so that's how we use the Unlimited Elements Dynamic Loop Builder to create a custom archive and include some custom fields. Okay, let's have a little summary and conclusion now. What I've seen from working with Unlimited Elements is that they have taken a modular approach. 
For example, you have lots of widgets, but you only download to the site the ones you want to use. Unlimited Elements is also flexible. You can use the widget builder to create your own widgets or modify one of the existing ones. This allows you to change the layout, styling, and even add custom fields. The Dynamic Loop Builder is another example of that flexibility. It lets you create your own custom grid to overcome the limitations of the Elementor Pro posts and archive widgets. I found that using the Dynamic Loop Builder was straightforward and easy. Unlimited Elements isn't the only plugin that addresses the limitations of the Elementor Pro posts and archive widgets. L Custom Skins and Dynamic Content for Elementor also let you create a custom loop. So I wouldn't purchase Unlimited Elements just for this feature. However, if you already have Unlimited Elements, or if you want to buy it to use its widget builder or widget collection, then the Dynamic Loop Builder is a nice addition to your toolbox. So that's my look at the Dynamic Loop Builder. There's a text summary of the video available at the Elementor 360 website, along with other walkthroughs, reviews, and resources. I hope you found the video useful. Thank you for watching.